this video, we will learn about a few of the flags in the x86 microprocessor and be introduced to a set of instructions that will allow us to perform logical or Boolean operations on the values in registers. In the early days of computers, the inventors borrowed some of their terminology from other existing technology. One of the methods of line-of-sight communications to avoid radio eavesdropping was the use of semaphore flags. In the same way that these flags were used to convey messages, flags in a microprocessor reveal information about the current state of the instructions being executed. Flags are closely related to registers in that they react to what is present in the registers. In fact, the flags are stored in a special flag register. When the x86 microprocessor executes instructions, it sets to 1 or resets to 0 a series of bits in the flag register. These flags will be used in the future to help us make decisions in our programs and will primarily be accessed through jump instructions to control the flow of our programs. Although there are many flags, in this course we will focus on just a few of the available flags. Each flag has two possible values, and they can either be set to 1 or 0. The flag's name is usually indicative of the flag when it is set to 1. The carry flag can be set to no carry or carry, and is set if the previously executed instruction had a carry or a borrow. The zero flag is set if the contents of the register used in the previous instruction left that register with a value of zero. The parity flag is set if the contents of the previously used register has an odd number of ones. The sign flag is set if the contents of the register have the sign bits set to negative. The overflow flag is set if the signed math instruction caused an overflow, which is different than a carry. The auxiliary carry flag is there if there is a carry or a borrow in the lower nibble. There are other flags, but these are the primary ones we may use in this course. As we start using various instructions in our programs, we will start to see how the instructions affect the values for the various flags. Do you remember when you learned how to add two numbers? First, you learned very simple patterns, such as 1 plus 1 equals 2. Soon the problems got more complex, and you learned that 9 plus 1 equals 0 with a carry of 1, which we figuratively call 10. Realistically, this is shorthand we use in our native number language of base 10. The computer performs its math operations in the binary or base 2 number system, where the only two digits available for use are 0 and 1. Therefore, when we compare some base 10 and base 2 addition problems, we may start to notice very different but similar patterns. In base 10, when we add 1 to 9, we write a 0 below and carry 1 to the next position to the left. Similarly, in base 2, since there are only two digits, we see the carry occur when we add 1 to 1. Now let's look at two problems using larger numbers. In base 10, we have 599 plus 1 equals 600. And in binary, we have 1011 plus 1 equals 1100. When we have the largest number already stored in a register, as in this example where we've moved FFFF hex, seen here in binary, into the AX register, then we add 1, the result is not as we expect. The final line of the base 2 side of the table contains 16 zeros after we carry the 1 across all of the bits. Of course, adding 1 to FFFF hex is not 0, but demonstrates what happens when the computer runs out of bits on which to perform math operations. The final carried bit, shown in parentheses, is not lost. 
Instead, it sets the carry flag to 1 or true. Incidentally, this final addition problem also sets a few other flags. Along with the carry flag, the zero sign and parity flags are also affected by simply adding 1 to FFFF hex. Now we can start to see how the flags can be used to help us make decisions about the results of the instructions we are asking the x86 processor to execute. Although the x86 microprocessor instruction set contains multiplication and division instructions, they are relatively inefficient, so it is sometimes more beneficial to use shift instructions to perform some multiplication and division operations. The logical shift instruction moves bits within the registers to the left or right, filling in the vacated bits with a zero. For example, if we start with the following binary value in the AL register, remember this is an 8-bit register, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. We know that the value in decimal is 10. Now we apply the logical shift left instruction to move the bits to the left by one bit. The result in the AL register is now 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Noting that the 0 was shifted in on the right side and that the leftmost zero has moved out and into the carry flag. Calculating the decimal value of the AL register now reveals that the 16 and 4 bits are high, thus 16 plus 4 equals 20. We started with 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, or 10, shifted left one bit, and ended up with 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, or 20. In essence, a left shift by one bit is the same as multiplying by two. Microprocessors such as the x86 are very efficient at performing bit level, also called bitwise calculations. Another term used to describe this operation is Boolean algebra, a branch of mathematics where the values of variables are the truth values of true and false represented within the microprocessor as 1 and 0, or on and off, respectively. These logical instructions are identical in operation to their counterpart logic gates in digital electronics. The x86 assembly language has four Boolean instructions. As one would expect, these instructions follow the same pattern as instructions you have seen up to this point, with the exception of the NOT instruction, which takes one operand, the destination. The NOT instruction simply inverts each of the individual bits in the destination location. The AND instruction performs the Boolean AND operation on each of the corresponding bits in the source and destination locations, then stores the result in the destination location. The OR instruction similarly applies the OR operation to the values in the source and destination locations. Finally, the XOR, or exclusive OR, instruction compares the source and destination values and only retains one value in the destination if the source OR the destination contains a 1, but not both, hence the name exclusive OR. One additional logical instruction, test, exists to assist the developer in determining the contents of a register without changing the value in the register. While not a traditional logic gate, it is effectively the AND instruction, but does not save the result to the destination location. The test instruction performs the AND operation, setting the flags accordingly, but does not change the value in the destination. Now we will write a program to multiply a number by 9 without using the multiply instruction. Once you've entered this program into Visual Studio, we'll look at what each line does, then we'll look at alternatives that will make the code more suited for incorporating into future programs. Pause the video, 
launch Visual Studio, and enter the program written in your lab manual or shown on the screen here. Use your x86 MASM template to enter this program. Set a breakpoint on the move instruction, run your program, and view the AX register after pressing F11 to execute the move instruction. You should see 000A in hex or 10 in decimal in the AX register. Pressing F11 again will execute the shift left instruction, shifting the bits in the AX register three times to the left. Now the AX register contains 50 hex, which is the decimal value 80. Now the only thing left to do is add the original value of 10 to the value currently in the AX register. Once we've done this, we will have multiplied the original value by 9. Press F11 and check out the AX register. You should see 90. If you notice, this is not an efficient program, since if we changed the number from 10 to 11, we'd have to rewrite the entire program, changing every 10 to 11. And what if this program used the 10 in many more places? What if our program looks like this, taking advantage of the data definition statement? This is a little better since we only have to make one change to our program to use 11 instead of 10. What if the number we want to multiply by 9 isn't known ahead of time? For example, during the execution of a program, we arrived at the value 10, which needs to be multiplied by 9. In this final example of multiplying by 9, we will see how to temporarily store our original number in a register. This version of the program is most realistic since it doesn't depend on the initial value being hard-coded into the program. Instead, it acts on the value stored in a register. The final program for this video will demonstrate most of the logical or Boolean instructions. Pause the video here, enter the following program into Visual Studio, set a breakpoint at the first move instruction, then restart the video and we'll step through this program. The first instruction, move AX, 0F hex, as expected, places the value 0F into the AX register. Remember to press F11 to execute the move instruction. Press F11 and look at the results in the AX register to see that it changed to FFF0 as a result of the NOT instruction. Press F11 again to execute the shift right instruction to shift the bits in the AX register four times to the right. This is the opposite of the shift right instruction we've seen before, dividing the value in AX by two for each bit shifted left. Now AX contains 0FFF in hex. Pressing F11, and the AND instruction compares the bits in the source and destination and only retains a 1 in each bit in the destination register if both the source and the destination values contain a 1 in that respective bit position. After executing the AND instruction, AX is 0234 hex. Finally, pressing F11 one more time, and the XOR instruction is executed using AX as both the source and the destination. The exclusive OR instruction compares the bits in the source and destination locations, and if the corresponding bit is different in the source and destination, one bit is set 1 and one bit is set 0, or only one bit is exclusively set, then the related bit in the destination is also set to 1. This is the same instruction used at the beginning of our template for each of the four registers A through D. Leave Visual Studio running with this program loaded or save the program so you can reload it. 
You may need to rerun it to answer some of the analysis questions in this week's lab. This concludes this video. Thank you.